Knowing how to use the flaps properly on our airplanes is critical to backcountry flying. 20 degrees of flaps gives us minimum stall speed, which is minimum takeoff and landing distance. When we go to 40 degrees of flaps, like on this particular airplane, which the base airframe is the 1980 Cessna 182Q, the difference in stall speed between 20 degrees and 40 degrees at a mid-range CG is one knot. Now one knot to me is insignificant in speed. A lot of guys come here and they'll think, well, I want a full 40 because the landing roll is shorter. And really it's not because the energy you're dissipating at 20 and 40 is virtually the same. So it doesn't mean 40 isn't good and, and, and there's uses for 40, but in terms of actual landing distance, I think they're both about the same. Now in most of my approaches, I like 20 because at 20 degrees, I have an easier go around. Um, you know, if I, have to, if I have to hop over a log or something, I can do it easy. 40 degrees comes in to me when you're either doing a steeper approach, obviously you're going to use that drag uh, for a steeper approach profile, or there's a lot of times where you'll be flying and it's kind of windy and turbulent, and the airplane maybe doesn't feel real comfortable at, at, at 55. You're heavy, so you want to carry a little more speed. Well, I'll carry a little more speed 60-65 at 20 degrees of flaps, which kind of alleviates some of the turbulence issues, and then on short final when I'm close, I'll go to a full 40, and I'll use that 40 as a speed break to slow me up to the 55, which is my target speed. And it keeps me under 60 for a minimum amount of time. Flaps work really good for that. The thing I don't like with flaps is if you're shooting a standard approach where it's just normal like three degree slope. If you induce the full 40 degrees of flaps and induce all the drag that comes with that, and you don't have anything to do with that drag, what happens? You have to increase the power and of course that leaves you less power available in an emergency for a go around. So I think, you know, when you're doing an approach, think of the full flaps in terms of a steeper approach, speed brake works good, but don't really think of it in terms of reducing my, my landing distance much. Now also with 40 degrees, there's a compromise. Of course, if you're landing with 40 degrees of flaps and you have to do a go around, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a, a complicated thing. Because of course you're shooting the power in, you're retrimming the airplane because it's got nose up trim, and with all this stuff going on, you've got trees and rocks all around you, what do you have to do? You've got to reach over and you've got to, you've got to raise the flap switch from 40 to 20. It's a fine motor skill. And almost everybody at that point, under that kind of duress, has gross motor skills. So consequently, when I have somebody do a go around and it surprises them, nine times out of 10, we're hanging on the prop at about 38 knots and they reach over and slap the flaps all the way up, which obviously you don't want to do. So a guy just has to be kind of careful. The other thing with full flaps that I've seen a couple times over the last 30, 40 years of flying is that I'll come in with full flaps. Fortunately, it's all been here. And when I raise the flaps, they don't come up. They stick down. And usually that's because of a connector in the wing. But still, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you've got a full 40 of flaps and they won't come up, you're going to be stuck for a while. With 20 degrees of flaps, if they stick, you can still get it out. You can still ferry it to where you want to go. Now, the 30 degree flap setting in between the 20 and 40 works really well. And uh, it induces a little bit more drag, but not a, an excessive amount, which helps on a little steeper approach. Plus it also helps inhibiting the forward speed just a little. And even me, you know, as much time as I've got in these airplanes, every now and then I'll come in just a little bit too fast. And by too fast, I mean like 60. Uh, to do short field work, you really need to be under that. So consequently, the 30 degrees gives me a little bit more drag, allows me to control the airspeed a little easier. But yet on a go-around, you don't need a flap change because the go-arounds work perfect with 30. The old Renz that we used to build had 30 degrees of flaps maximum for takeoff and landing. And one day I thought, you know, if the Ren could do takeoffs with 30 degrees of flaps, why couldn't we do it with these? So I went out and shot a whole bunch of takeoffs with 30 degrees of flaps and it works very well. So 30 is kind of an intermediate position that works well. 40 is okay. Like I say, if, if you need it for a speed break or you need a steeper approach. But one has to really analyze what you're doing on the approach, what you need to do, and what flap setting is required to achieve the ends. And if you can do that, you'll get maximum performance out of the airplane and you'll be safe.